Hello, my name is uh, Alessandro Baronti and welcome to the Territory Management Plan Training Module. We designed this tool to help you improve uh, territory uh, travel in efficiency and bring uh, more productivity to your day-to-day -day, um, activity. So let's uh, start this uh, journey together. So first step is uh, let's review uh, the agenda together. Uh, I suggest all of you to take the entire module. However, uh, after you're done with the first uh, training, there is an opportunity for you to go back to specific uh, segment of the module to really be able to study this information more in depth based on your interest and your needs. So the first step is a territory study. In this segment, we're going to identify um, your account base and also we're going to understand the territory classification segmentation and I cannot think of anybody better than Mark Mixon to really walk you through this uh, specific uh, segment. On a second step we're going to go into the territory zoning. We're going to learn on how to build the zone and, uh, and how to get into the zone in an effective uh, way. Then we're going to explore the tool that we're suggesting all of you guys uh, to use and uh, to really be able to improve uh, efficiency and in closing, we're going to go through the scheduling on really how to follow a specific guide to maximize efficiency. So let's start. And Mark, thank you for joining us. And the floor is yours for the first segment of the training. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ali. Over the next couple slides, I'm going to talk to you briefly about a territory study. It's very important when you look at your book of business that you're able to segment your customer base out. Your customer base generally is segmented out by A accounts, B accounts, and C accounts. Your A accounts, of course, are your top accounts. They're the ones that are paying your mortgage. Your B accounts are those that are in the middle. They may be committed to you. They may not be committed to you. Um, if you carry multiple lines, they may only carry one line instead of multiple lines from you. Your C accounts are your people at the bottom half of your book of business. It's very important that you learn to segment your customers into an ABC classification. It helps, number one, with your routing, how you organize your days. It helps you know how to approach each different customer and each classification is approached in a different way. Uh, if you think about it, basically there's a different approach to our top customers, the ones that are paying our mortgage, versus those customers at the, in the C classification that are at the bottom. So very clear before you sit down to do your pre-call planning to walk into an account that you know the classification of your customer as A, B, or C. On the next slide, I'll dive a little bit deeper into it, but make sure that you're working with your district sales manager in order to classify, uh, in order to sit down and help you classify the breakdown of A, B, and C accounts in your district. So on the second slide here, I'll give you some examples of how to use the breakdown of A, B, and C customers. So as you can see on the right hand side here we've taken a customer account list and we've determined who the A customers are, the B customers, and the C customers. We highlight the A customers in green, the B customers are in yellow, and not shown on this sheet would be your C customers left in white. Showing effective use of A, B, and C. So say you're someone who drives from town to town and you have to look at uh, getting on the phone, setting up a day when you're driving to this town. Well, obviously, the most effective use of your time would be to take your A customers or your green customers there at the top, and you would schedule out your appointments and set an acre appointment, which is what I call an appointment with the top account, as a foundation for setting up that town. So I would make sure that when I'm scheduling out, the first and, fir first and foremost priority is to get a green customer or an A customer as early as I can in the morning on my schedule create some momentum through the day. Then I would move on to the yellow customer uh, or the B customer and then I would simply use the C customer list as fill-in times. If I drive to that town and I've seen the A's and I've seen the B customers, then I simply use the C customers to drop in on, fill-in time. Those are places where I know that I can go grow my business, but I'm not spending my wills calling on them. I'm giving my most valuable time to my A customers and my B customers. That's just one example of how to use the ABC list. Another quick good example of how to, uh, a usage of the A, B, and C customer list is we're not going to approach an A customer the same way we're going to approach a C customer or the same way we're going to approach a B customer. And simply knowing these classifications with all the tools we have on the table, it helps you pick and choose what you're going to put in your tool belt before you walk through the door. So that is the simple classification of A, B, and C. 
please work with your district sales manager in order to see where these levels come out. Together you guys can create a plan and I'm sure that it will lead to more territory efficiency. So back to you, Allie. Thank you, Mark. The segment was fantastic. So now that we have all of this information, uh, we need to keep it simple, right? Otherwise, we're going to get confused and confused uh, people don't move uh, to action. Now, you work with your district sales manager in getting all of this information and your district sales manager really work with our business intelligence department to get all of the data that you need to be able to move you into action. Now, it's very important uh, to import all of this information into a mapping system, into the right uh, mapping system. You guys are going to learn about uh, our tool in just um, in just a few slides when you import all of this information into a map what that does it creates a visual for you you're going to be able to see exactly where each customer is a position you're going to be able to see in different color your a customers your b customers your c customers your potential customers you're going to be able to identify opportunity, as Mark said, for example, with the business development, like, for example, alliances group that you're not working with and be able to identify an alliances group in a different uh, color. And as you look at to, into the map, you're going to be able to clearly see pocket in your territory with dense business pocket in your territory with um, area that needs to be developed you're going to see area in your territory with no business uh, whatsoever now uh, you may be working in a rural market you may be, be in an urban territory and so the rules uh, will vary a little bit but it's very important to be able to have a full understanding of where the business is and it's very important to be able to create a zone based on that specific business. Now, how do you build a, a zone of business? So the first step is to understand exactly where your base is at. What is your home base? And based on your home base, really to identify two different priorities. What are your local market and what are your overnight market? If you don't have any overnight market, you build the zone based on, based on, uh, based on quadrant of a business uh, to avoid for yourself uh, to run from one area to another, especially during uh, traffic uh, during, uh, during the day. So let me give you an example. So let's say that uh, you're traveling in a rural area or let's say that you are in a dense area. So if you're in a rural area, we're going to use the example of uh, the far east side of your territory. If you're in an urban area, we're going to use the example of maybe three blocks in a specific dense area in the far east side of your territory. Now, you're going to identify by looking at the map that in that specific uh, far east area of your territory, let's say you have uh, 20 customers between um, active and uh, potential customers. And you know that to be able to work that territory, assuming that you're seeing five customers in one day because you have a scheduled visit, you're going to need four days to dedicate into that specific area. So it's very important for you to identify this zone and estimate how much time you will need to invest in every zone. So you will need to do some homework to be able to assess that. And then I'm going to tell you in just a few slides on how to put that information uh, to, to work. So let's recap on the rules and priority. Step number one, identify overnight travel in market. Step number two, identify local travel markets. Step number three, divide each market into zone based on the number of accounts. Uh, you can do that following a zip code or routing uh, system. And then the final step, create a travel in priority based on account mix in the zone, which is going to be A, B, and C type of uh, customer. Okay, now let's get in uh, to the zone. And uh, very important to understand how far you are from the area that you're going to work in the morning and leave in time early enough to be able to be there as selling time starts. Selling times is 
precious time. You don't want to waste uh, time during selling time and be able to move uh, from one area to an, another area in uh, the territory. So what are some of the rules to follow to be able to improve uh, efficiency? Target a small account hoops during uh, selling hours. When you're working in a specific uh, zone, a specific uh, zip code, you want to stay into that area and you want to you want to maximize your time into that area without transferring in another area because that will uh, waste the time for you during uh, selling hours. 15 to 20 minutes uh, drive from uh, point A to, to point B should really be the maximum transfer for you to do during a uh, selling uh, time. What about the strategy? Use the early morning to be able to move into a zone or use the lunch hours for longer hoops, longer transfers from a zone A to a zone B to be able to maximize your efficiency. Priority. Um, work each zone using account prioritization is uh, always uh, see your number, uh, your, your A account first, then the B account and then the C account. You need to control the schedule. You're going to notice that your C customers are going to expect the most from you and they're going to give you the least. And uh, your primary real estate when it comes to selling time, which are the best appointment of the day, the nine o'clock, the 10 o'clock appointment should be given to the A accounts, not to the B and the C type of uh, customers. And avoid chasing stock orders. Do not zigzag around your territory. That will absolutely kill your traveling uh, efficiency. Okay, now we're getting into the, the interesting part of this uh, presentation, which is really on how to learn on how to have an effective uh, rotation in, uh, in the territory. I suggest that you consult with your district sales manager to, um, to size the proper rotation based on your um, uh, product mix. So on a rule of thumb, if you are uh, carrying a lifestyles brand, uh, you may want to consider an eight weeks rotation and then higher your product is in terms of price point and higher is the, the actual rotation. So if you are, let's say, into the fashion division, you may be between eight to 12 weeks rotation cycle. If you are carrying ultra luxury product, you may find yourself on a 12 weeks rotation cycle. However, there is always the exception of the rule because your A account are going to require for you a visit every four to five weeks. So you really need to build that uh, in the way that you organize your territory, both in a rural or in an urban type of uh, uh, market. So let's go back to what we said before. Remember, we used the example of the far east side of your territory with 20 uh, customers, uh, which will require for you to invest uh, four full days uh, to be able to extinguish the market. And so what is the best way to be able to actually cover that uh, territory in a very effective way? Um, the best way is actually to divide your rotation into different cycles. So if you are on an eight weeks cycle, you want to go into the far east area every four weeks. Why is that? Because uh, the schedule doesn't always work in black and white as much as we would like to. Accounts um, may cancel an appointment, the accounts buyer may be, be sick, and um, that specific day that you're in that area may not be the best day to prospect customers because it's uh, probably the day that the office is uh, the busiest uh, with the doctor's appointment. So you want to be flexible. You also want to be flexible to be able to be in the territory more frequently, to really be able to deliver consistency and be able to adjust to changes and to inconvenience that happen in your territory. So if that customer cancel, the appointment, all of a sudden you do not lose a full uh, rotation and because you're actually going to be back uh, in between the rotations. So you're going to be able to capture uh, that, uh, that visit. You want to try to avoid uh, losing a calling cycle because if you do, uh, you lose a business and, and also not seeing a customers for a long time, it may give an opportunity to another rep to consolidate uh, the relationship with the customers as they're seeing you as much as they, uh, as they should. In terms of zone management, and as I said before, 
always use uh, the early AM hours to be able to transfer from one market to another to keep your efficiency at, uh, at the best. So now that we uh, learn all of these uh, cool things and that we're going to start to apply all of these cool things, why don't we explore the actual tool that is actually going to help us uh, to actually maximize our efficiency. So let me introduce you to a tool that is actually going to make you more and more productive. Okay, so you have a ton of location data. You know, like street addresses, cities, GPS coordinates, and other important information. Documented in spreadsheets, web pages, docs, and tables. This is how you visualize it. Ugh. And this is how you should visualize it. Because it's impossible to really understand your data unless you map it. But there's no chart for making a map. Oh, man. And those high-tech mapping technologies are way too complicated and expensive. Seriously, what does fuzzy tolerance and all that other stuff mean anyway? I don't know. Yeah. We don't know either. So unless you mark all of the locations manually, one by one on a map, and color code each one according to different variables, yeah, you're never gonna do that. Nope. That means you're missing out on mind-blowing insights. What? And those run-of-the-mill insights too. So what if mapping data was as easy as copy and paste? <laughs> it is. Batch Geo maps all of that location data in that one easy step. Okay, fine. Two, if you really wanna get technical. Just copy all the information from the spreadsheet. Don't forget to include the header row and paste it into the batch geo generator. Then map it. Ridiculously easy, right? But hold on to your seats. There's more. You can visualize your locations by patterns in the data. It's like the most important part. Just choose what you want to group by and you're one click away from those mind-blowing insights we were talking about. And since this tool is perfect for your business or whatever, there's batch geo pro. It's even faster, more robust, and it secures your confidential data. So, take your location data out of those spreadsheets, and really, from any source you can think of, and create a map today at batchgeo.com. Mapping should be this easy. Batch Geo makes mapping easy. Using Batch Geo, you can quickly and easily make a map using any spreadsheet or table containing geographic data. This can be a physical address, IP address, or geo coordinates. For this video, we'll be using Batch Geo Pro. To make mapping even easier, Batch Geo offers a spreadsheet template available on our website for download and use. Once your spreadsheet is open, either via Excel, Google Docs, OpenOffice Calc, or any other spreadsheet program, select and copy the data you want to map. It is very important to include the header rows in your selection. Once you have your location data selected and copied, including the header row, you can now paste into the location data box of the Batch Geo website homepage. You can also drag and drop your spreadsheet file into the location data window. Your data is now ready to map, but to ensure all the address fields are correct, click the Validate and Set Options button. Here you can confirm that your spreadsheet header rows properly match fields generated by Batch Geo. If not, make the corrections now. Under Basic Options, the Group By field allows you to group your location data according to a specific value within your spreadsheet, such as a group, category type, or numerical value. Batch Geo Pro lets you choose between 10 marker color options, or just 7 with our free version. You can choose a single color for all markers, or automatically show different colors based on data values. This area features additional and advanced customization options, which are further covered in our How to Edit Your Map tutorial video. You are now ready to click on the Make Map button. The markers are color-coded according to your selected group by field. Any data included in your original spreadsheet is now also included in your map. Simply click on any of the markers to view. Now click Save and Continue, which opens a dialog box that allows you to add a title and description to your new map. This is also where you select sharing settings and input an email address. With Batch Geo Pro, once your map is saved, you can access your view and edit map URLs by clicking on My Maps. Free users will receive an email of your map's URL as well as links that will allow you to edit your map at a later date. You will also have the ability to embed your map on a website by using the embedded code that is mailed to you. Batch Geo. Mapping should be this easy. 
I know, I know what you're thinking, and you're probably thinking, oh my God, I wish I had this tool five years ago, right? But it is never too late. So, so now that we have the tool, now that we have all of the information, I think it's important to maximize on our knowledge. And if we just took over an existing territory, it's just a, a matter of uh, taking good notation to really understand our customers even better. You want to know the habit of your customers. You want to know all of the customers that are opening early in the morning. You want to know all of the customers that are closing late at night. You want to know what is the best day and the worst day for your customers to see you. And, um, and you want to know if they prefer to see you early in the morning, midday, or at the end of the day. And then with that knowledge uh, combined uh, together, you're going to be able to uh, build what I consider the perfect uh, schedule. So I'm going to share with you something that I did many years ago when I was uh, a sales consultant. So let's use uh, Mainsville, Kentucky as an example. Mainsville, Kentucky is one hour and a half away from my home. So I used to leave uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning to be in the market uh, sharp at uh, 7.30. Now, now I'm in that zone. And 8 o'clock is uh, Dr. Jones, which was one of my A account. And uh, it was a fast call from 8 to 9 o'clock. I was out of Dr. Jones. Just five minutes uh, transfer, a 9 o'clock appointment with Dr. Martin, a B potential account, uh, which is also a board management uh, type of account. I was done with that in less than uh, 30 minutes. Now I have some free time to really be able to actually get on the phone, uh, do some uh, follow up, uh, schedule some additional appointment, and then I'm just a 15 minutes uh, transfer from my 11.30 appointment uh, with Dr. Sherman, which is also an A account. And, and I'm out of that uh, in about uh, one hour and 15 minutes, uh, just uh, 10 minutes away from Dr. Taylor at one o'clock, which is a C account or board management and also a fast call. So this also gave me some uh, time availability to make at least a three cold call in between uh, accounts uh, to really be able to target uh, and prospect a new customer's code and be sharp and ready for my four o'clock appointment uh, at Connie Optical, which used to be a C account. I'm done now by five and I'm on the road and I'm home by uh, 6.30. And uh, rules, always reschedule appointment. Uh, you drive uh, the schedule. Do not allow your customers uh, to drive uh, your schedule. Well, let's go through together the scheduling uh, guide. Obviously, less appointments you have uh, during the day and more time you have uh, to scout uh, for additional business. Uh, so, in theory, if you had zero appointments, you should have plenty of time to really be able to be out there and uh, call call on as many accounts as possible, at least uh, 10 in, uh, in one day, which, you know, it will bring the number of calling uh, time um, uh, lower based on the number of appointments that you have. You want to strive uh, to have uh, five appointments uh, every day because um, appointments are taking you to orders. And if you don't have appointments, most likely you're not going to get an order. I can tell you that uh, uh, other than a few exceptions, it's uh, is not easy to get an order without a set appointment. I know that some markets uh, are the exception of these, but for the most part, uh, the rules uh, bring you to a uh, high level of success if you have a full appointment uh, uh, schedule. And uh, so fine tune all of your daily trips until you maximize your time and efficiency. And then the secret is that after you discover the perfect schedule, repeat and do the same thing over and over again and transfer that perfect schedule to the next uh, cycles, 8, 10, 12 weeks uh, down uh, the road. Okay, so in, uh, in closing, we covered a lot of ground uh, today, but uh, obviously by consulting yourself uh, with your district sales manager, define the right calling cycle based on your product uh, division. Also, zoom in to the calling cycle based on your account base. The A accounts may require for you to see them more often, of course. We spoke between four to six weeks. The B accounts be maybe eight to 12. The C accounts may be 10 to 14. So size this opportunity. If you carry multiple collection, uh, prioritize on two or three collection at the time as you're doing the presentation. Do not try to vomit on your customers uh, with, a with a bunch of product at once. You're going to, you're going to penalize uh, the second, the third, the fourth collection that you're actually uh, presenting. 
and an account that, uh, account attention span is between 20 to 25 minutes you want to maximize on that so you may want to consider a strategy where you set your next appointments in four weeks with a specific customer that is buying multiple line from you so you can actually present two or three collection for each uh, seating uh, if you get pushback from a double appointment, try to shorten your calling cycle. So if you're on 12 weeks with the customers, try to go on eight or, or seven, and that will help you to maximize uh, your productivity. I hope you found uh, this uh, training module um, effective uh, for you and uh, looking forward to the next event. Thank you very much.